There are many complicated theories about the meaning of the word freedom. For me, a simple girl from Afghanistan, I knew what it was to feel unfree. But getting to understand what freedom was required not just a 5,000 kilometer journey over land, but also a continuing and sometimes painful process of self-discovery. My name is Homa Golestani, and today I'm here to share my journey of freedom with you. This is a picture of my family when I was a child. I grew up in a very traditional and religious family without a straightforward definition of the word freedom. My father would always define freedom around values. His values were based on our religious and cultural identities, and unfortunately, they did not include much freedom for women. My mother was a loving and caring woman who had always tried to find peace within and had somehow accepted my father's values, including his views on the role and position of women. She had always encouraged me to go to a school, but she too believed that as a girl, I would need a man to take care of me. I remember clearly when I was just seven or eight years old, and when me and my two brothers, one older and one younger, asked my mother with childish enthusiasm, what would you think we can become when we grow up? My mother looked at my older brother and said, you can become a doctor, my younger brother an engineer, and when it was my turn, she said I would get married and become a mother. Of course, at the time, as an eight years old girl who had always been in a constant competition with her brothers, it was really hard for me to understand what my mother was telling me. But unfortunately, she wasn't that wrong. At the age of 17, I was married off to a man that was from a family much more conservative than ours. I met my husband at the first time on our engagement party and hated him at the first glance. But I knew deep down that I didn't have the power to stop the marriage. And besides, he was from a privileged family and according to many, I should be grateful that they want me to be their bride. But unlike what others believed, the marriage turned out to be such a poor decision for me that the only secure place for me was behind the curtain of my room where I used to hide myself in. Yes, my husband was a rich man, comparing to my family, but he was also a drug dealer and a violence man who could hit me severely for the smallest disobedience. Soon, and before I could adjust myself to my new circumstances and my husband, I became a mother. A mother to a child over whom I had no control regarding his upbringing or even the choice of his name. I remember having this beautiful dream all the time, a dream in which I closed my eyes and when I opened them, I wasn't in that miserable situation anymore. A dream that came true several years later. With the help of a friend, an old classmate, who could hear me while others other refused to do so, I left my country and escaped my husband. I wasn't specifically looking for freedom, but as a way to survive. When I arrived here in the Netherlands after a long and dangerous journey with my son on my back, the first thing that caught my eyes was how different especially women are here. They appeared fearless to me and I was astounded by the way they dressed, talked and behaved. And that was the moment that for the first time I did the idea of freedom accord to me. And I started to wonder, what if I became like them? And that was the moment that I started to change. I started dressing more like Western women and even changed my son's name and Western name. <laughs> From the outside, it seemed that I was eventually given the freedom. Freedom that at the first glance, I just assumed to be about my appearance. From the inside, however, I was still old me. A person who needed someone to tell her what should or shouldn't do. While for the first two years that I was still waiting to be accepted as a refugee, I started learn, uh, to learn Dutch and English, and with the help of some volunteers and self-study, I was prepared enough to get accepted at, into university preparatory classes immediately after my asylum application was accepted. While leaving the asylum center to my own house, I faced two realities. First, here, I'm just not seen as another person. Here, I'm an outsider being labeled as a refugee. 
Second, none of those possibilities and role models that at the first had amazed me could be connected to. The language bar barrier and cultural differences seem to be so big that led me to believe that none of, none of those possibilities are really open to me. Soon I left my preparatory classes with a failure and found myself in a relationship that was based on my fear and my constant need to have someone to tell me what to do or what not to do. Soon that relationship ended too. And after that, I couldn't trust any, anyone or even myself anymore. I was so afraid to be, make more mistakes that I ended up living in total isolation. I spent so many time crying and really not having a purpose to be alive. But how about my son, you may ask? Sometimes it felt as I couldn't even see him. My days were so dark and I felt so weak that everything seemed to be bigger than my power, the power of being even a mother. But what could I do, I asked myself one day. Acceptance? But could I really accept seeing my son struggling and let him be so lonely? My answer was no. Although I didn't know who I am here or what I want, I knew clearly who I am not. I am not a person who gives up. I am not a mother who raised an unhappy child. Knowing the person that I didn't want to be gave me the strength to get out. And despite my terrible dodge that always made me afraid to others, I st started to establish connection. I found a new school for my son and a new job for myself as a cleaner. This led me to gain a bit of self-confidence and helped me to find my values and self-respect. I remembered how much I always hated the idea that as a woman, I would always be dependent on a man, that I am not allowed to do the majority of things that are regarded as men's rights. Now I found independence as a, as a value and as a, a basis for greater self-confidence. And over time, when I gave myself the permission to dream again, my dream of becoming a lawyer emerged. I wanted to become a lawyer to improve women, right, women rights in my country. That was what Free Homa in me would want to do. After one year of hard work, I passed the required exams and got accepted into law bachelor's degree. When receiving the letter of acceptance, I couldn't believe what I was reading. Congratulations, you have been admitted at Free University of Amsterdam. For me, it wasn't only accepting as a law bachelor degree. For me, it was tasting freedom, and what a wonderful taste it was. Freedom to me means, on the one hand, daring to drink and knowing what you want, and on the other hand, finding the courage and power to pursue them. Today, I told you my story and spoke about my past. Memories that, believe me, I did all in my power to forget. <sighs> but my heart breaks when I see women in my country struggling in the same situation as me, if not worse. Girls in my country are not allowed to attend the school anymore. Many of them are forced to marry and are subjected to many other human rights abuses, while the rest of the world seems to be forgetting about them. Today, I'm standing here to provide hope to those who seek for freedom and encourage them to fight for it, and perhaps be a voice to those girls in my country whose the only experience with freedom is being unfree. I want to finish my speech with one request. Notwithstanding all the suffering in Ukraine and elsewhere in the world, you also keep those girls in your mind and act if and when there is an opportunity for us in the West to help them. Remember that today I'm able to talk about my journey of freedom because only one person could hear me, while for the rest, I was just an unpleasant voice that they chose to ignore. I hope you can be that person that listens to those who feel unheard. Thank you.